morning everybody I am gonna try to oh, film this <laughs> which doesn't look so good while carrying this big old box this big old basket of stuff to the garden um, talk to you a little bit about what's going on um, everybody thinks that if you've been gardening for a while that you don't have issues that you have to deal with that everything's perfect it's one of the things I've been talking to you guys about nothing ever goes the same way two years in a row I don't care who you are or how long you've been gardening um, but there are some pretty common occurrences that happen every year. I'm doing battle with the dog. She wants to come in, but she's still banned. <laughs> um, there are some pretty common occurrences that happen every year in everybody's gardens um, that you can't stop, but that's what maybe you can kind of control a little bit. And one of them that I'm dealing with right now is squash bugs. We also have some vine borers going on too. So today I'm going to um, handle, try to handle the squash bugs um, and show you what I'm doing. Our spaghetti plant, spaghetti squash plant is pretty much, I think, done for. This is, I'll turn around, early morning in the garden, cobwebs, yay. I'm not a girly girl. I'm not a big fan of bugs either, so <laughs> take it for what it is. But anyway, so this is what's happening with our squash plant. Um, I believe there's a vine borer in this stem back here because it's really soft and it's actually breaking off. Um, and nothing, maybe one in this one. I'm not going to get in there. I can get in there and I could dig it out. I'm not going to worry with that because this plant has produced... We're gonna, I'm going to harvest them today too so you can see. I think we've got four or five big spaghetti squash from one plant. So that's a good harvest. And a couple smaller ones. They will they will continue to harvest, or ripen when we take them off um, the vine. So I'm going to come in. I'm going to eradicate as many of the squash bugs as I can today that I see right now. Um, and I also have a trick that I've learned um, that I'm going to show you guys uh, how to help prevent them from spreading more. They do live in the top six inches of the soil. They will, um, squash bugs will go after any um, squash plant, zucchinis, acorn squash, you know, winter squash, summer squash, watermelons, cucumbers, because they're in the, they're all in the cucur cucurbit I can never pronounce that family um, and we are, are seeing some damage like on our pumpkin plants also um, so I'm gonna try to slow the progress down as much as I can but you're never gonna stop it all the way I don't use chemicals on our garden it's just just one of the one of the things you have to deal with when you don't use chemicals and, and squash bugs, even with, with chemical herbicides, or pesticides, I mean, they are still an issue for those people also because, because of the way that they are um, built, basically. The, the eggs, um, and I'll try to find some on some of these leaves so you guys can see what they look like. The eggs are like really tough. The um, bodies of the adults, you know, are, are also very tough so it's hard to get anything to permeate them or penetrate them so the best that you can do is to one of the methods I'm gonna, well, I'm gonna show you two methods today that I'm gonna do um, to try to get rid of them well technically three I guess if you think about it <laughs> um, so it's not perfect it's not gonna get rid of all of them like I said because once they each each adult female squash bugs lays 250 eggs a year that's a lot they multiply I think worse than rabbits do <laughs> quite honestly so there, there's a lot of of potential for bugs here so anyway let's go, I'm gonna go ahead and get started and show you a little bit about what I've got here in my basket two um, tools that you can find around the house anyhow well most houses I should say a piece of board 
doesn't have to be anything fancy, just a piece of board. I'm gonna, this is two folds for me right now because I didn't bring my kneeler out. So this is my kneeler for, for the first half of this video. And <clears throat> handy dandy bucket of soapy water. So you can see how yellow like these plants are. They suck like, for lack of better terms, the juices out of the plants, out of this, the leaves and stuff. Like I said, with this particular plant though, we there's probably uh, vine borer damage also. So some of this could be from the squash bugs, which I know they're on here because Brett and I have picked them off just the, um, yesterday. So some of the damage could be from the vine borer and some of it could be from the squash bugs on this plant. I'm gonna come in and just eradicate as many of the squash bugs as I can find today. I'm gonna harvest all the spaghetti squash off of here. And then um, I'm actually gonna leave the plant in the ground though. But I'm gonna come back every day for the next couple days and go through and pick, again, any adults I find, any eggs I find um, to help because they will still stay, the adults will still stay with this plant even though it's dead, they'll still stay with that plant for a while. So that's, in fact, that's how they overwinter in your garden. So that's why it's important to, uh, at the end of the season, come in and take everything out of your garden because they, they, they'll overwinter in that and that's how they um, produce the next year. Of course, today I'm not going to be able to find any bugs. They like to hide underneath the leaves, and that's where they'll lay their eggs, too, is underneath right here. Let me show you. I knew if I got down on my knees, I'd find one up high. Right there. See that cluster? That's an egg cluster. You could try to pick them off. They're, they're on there pretty well though. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut that leaf off. I'm gonna take it. I'm not gonna put that in my compost pile. Some people do. I'm not going to. Um, you can either scrape the eggs off on the ground and the beetles will eat them. Um, because apparently, from my understanding is that once they're off that leaf, they don't, they're not viable anymore. I don't take the chance. I just actually put them in my trash. I, we can't burn here like that. If, if I could burn, I would just burn it. We can't, so I just throw it out in the trash can. Actually, I might, I might try just scraping them into the bucket of soapy water and see how that works. So since um, this plant is going to come out anyway, I just went ahead and I just cut the the leaf, whole leaf off. If it were a plant, I was going to try to save. I would just try to scrape them off. But I'm, this plant's coming out anyway because with the vine borer. Um, with that vine borer I'm not going to try to save it and like I said this, the, the fruit on it is ready to go anyway for the majority of it I'm just going to tear that whole section of the leaf off and put it in the soapy water and that's no special soap it's just regular dish soap okay, I don't see more eggs on that one Let's see. Let me back up here and see. Hopefully, I'm trying not to tip the camera over. It's on shaky ground right now. I'm trying to find a cluster of the juveniles to show you guys. Not that it's my favorite thing to find because if you've ever seen a cluster of juvenile, they're gross. There's a lot of them. And it's just gross. I'm not a bug. I'm not. I'm not a girly girl, but I'm not a bug girl either. <laughs> like it's not my idea of fun to stick my head into a spider web or to have to grab a handful of bugs. <laughs> if you watch this week's garden tour, you'll you'll see that I'm not a. I'm not a bug person, um, or a surprise person either because we had a surprise visitor from a salamander on the garden tour, or at least I still am saying that's what it is, I don't know, it was a big brownish thing. I didn't get it on video though, but it was there, it wasn't my imagination. 
Okay, so I want to show you this real quick. I actually just found this, and this doesn't usually happen with eggs. This cluster of eggs is actually on the top side of that leaf. Usually the clusters are always on the bottom. That's a new for me. I've never seen them clustered on the top like that. So, learn something new every day. Every year, every day, there's something new that's being learned, so. Wow. Hmm. I mean, hmm, it's good, but hmm, it's weird because, but I'm not finding, you know, any of the juveniles even. Brett and I did come out, like I said, we, we picked quite a few. Um, of the juveniles off. So let me go look further down here. Move this all out of the way here. And you're not gonna get every single one, guys. It's just, it's just impossible um, to to get them all. They're very good at hiding. And we're human, you know. It's just whew, wasp. I'm telling you, it's a bug, bug eat bug world right now. Um, if you guys hear the dogs barking, there's uh, neighbors are having some work done, and I just have nosy dogs. Especially him. That's Wrigley. He's our number one nosy neighbor. That's what we call him. The nosy neighbor. He, he scouts the yard. But he's a good dog. He does his job. Let's us know when people are around. That he thinks shouldn't be around. But... You know, guys, I'm not finding a lot more right now. I'm not complaining, complaining. I am, but I'm not. Now I'm kind of rethinking my strategy. I may... I gotta check the other side because there's vines over there too and these are there. I'm gonna go check them. Always thinking on your feet, guys. I'm trying to trace back the, uh, this one here. Let's see what section it goes to because it goes to this one. And this one is the only one that I'm not seeing any vine bore damage on. This one definitely, I don't know if you can tell some of the squishiness of that. It's, that's usually indicative that there's a vine borer in there. I may just pull that one. I'm still going to harvest the big, because they're ready, pretty much ready anyway, so I'm still going to harvest them. But I may just pull that one vine over there and just keep an eye. You guys, I had this plan for you. <laughs> And keep an eye out for the squash bugs to see um, if maybe this vine, because this has still got a couple smaller ones on it. Oops, it's not a good one. It's got a smaller one here that's not, that, that one's not really ready to come off. Like this one will be fine. But maybe, I'll, and this vine looks pretty healthy. So maybe I'll just go um, pull that one off, that vine out, and leave the rest of them up. Oh man, you can hear the pollinators in the in the cucumbers this morning. You see, this vine looks pretty healthy as well. But see, my pumpkins are kind of. 
kind of looking a little bit shady. This one is a, I'm, I'm sure is a vine borer on that pumpkin plant. I haven't checked this for squash bugs yet. I don't know. I did not wrap the foil around these either. I was trying to experiment with the vine borers and I didn't wrap my pumpkin plants. Can you see the little bee in there? Doing this job. Um, I didn't wrap the pumpkin plants or any of the acorn or spaghetti squash. I wrapped zucchini back there and yellow squash back there. It's also getting very hot here. It's that time of year. So um, I'm not expecting these guys to last much longer anyway. Hot and humid with the blight is usually a you know, see, you can see it's getting some powdery mildew on it now. Not blight, sorry, powdery mildew. Oh, I've got tomato head right now. <laughs> I'm watching my tomatoes really closely. Yeah, see, we got powdery mildew going on. Starting. This is just something that this wasn't here yesterday, last night even. The door. I'm trying to make a decision. Oh, you're going to hear Wrigley get a little bit miffed right now. Well, not miffed. Excited because one of his friends is walking by. And he doesn't get to go see them. Oh. But while I'm standing over here in the shade, I've moved away from the spaghetti squash plant right there. This is my egg corn plant. Right there is a squash bug. Adult. So, they've moved on. And the locusts are here now, apparently. So it looks like they've moved on to the acorn plant. Um, acorn squash, I should say. It's really not acorns, guys, it's squash. <laughs> Even though I call it acorn plant and acorn, it's acorn squash. I just shorten it up. I think I'm going to go ahead. I'm still going to harvest those um, four or five spaghetti squash that look like they're ready to go. Um, I'm going to clip off the yellow leaves and maybe I'll just see what happens. See how much longer it goes with that. Um, and obviously I'll stay on top of picking the, the squash bugs and that like I, like I was doing with the soap. Um, and I'm gonna get the spider web out of my face. <laughs> and then I'm gonna go on to the uh, acorn squash. Cause see how these are starting to turn yellow? That's usually meaning that they're stink bugs. Well, we just saw that big adult one, so. But there's something else eating them too, so. The joys of gardening, guys. The joys of organic gardening. Plus we got some powdery mildew setting in here. I'm not freaking out about. Um, this plant has a couple acorn squash on it. See there? Can you see that tiny one? That's a juvenile. Come on, focus. That's a juvenile squash bug. Oh, and there's another one. This is a different stage. Okay, so I'm going to grab my soap bucket real quick because of course I left it on the other side um, and get those guys off of there. It's an ongoing battle. It's not anything you're doing wrong. It's nature. It's some climates are worse for the squash bugs than others. Some climates, from my understanding, don't have an issue with squash bugs, which I envy those climates because they can be pretty, pretty gnarly here. Oh, um, look at, see, powder mildew. I don't know that I'm going to try to fight it, guys. I think I'm just going to keep uh, getting um, the 
fruit right now. Fruit's looking a little gnarly anyway, starting to because of the heat. It gets to a certain point that it's um, too much powdery mildew. Then I'll just um, pull the plants. We got plenty of time to grow more. I've actually got more started from the fall crop. I'm okay with that. Entire, no questions asked. I do want to see my pumpkins though come to fruition. I don't know if you can see that baby right there on top. So that's two good sized ones and hopefully that one, that plant um, hangs on to get that one because it's the same plant that the other one that's almost ripe is on. So hopefully that one gets ripened and then I'll be all right. I, it is what it is. Some years you have big crops, some years you have big pests, <laughs> some years you have both. So, you this dog. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you eating now? You're always eating something. You are. Sit. Shelby, sit. Shelby, sit. <gasps> what are you doing? Oh, it's stick. Oh, I'm so shocked. It's a stick. I'm not playing with the stick with you right now, silly. Later. Later. All right. <laughs> She's so silly. Anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and harvest these, and then I'll be back in a little bit. So there are two ways you can check to see if your squash already will be okay to harvest. Um, the stem. Some people go by the stem. But also, if you try to poke your thumb into the, or your nail into the squash, and it's pretty firm. See, that one left a little mark, but, you know, I was, I was giving it a pretty good push, too. So that one's right in the house. Well, I'll show you this little one down here. Whoops. It's right there. It's closer than I thought. <laughs> see, this one, see, that one still probably should go a little bit longer if I can. Because I left it, I mean, that pressure wasn't even much of a pressure. So, I'm going to let that one go a little bit longer and harvest these other ones. Okay, so I'm going to try to hold the camera and harvest this one. Uh, so you guys can see what I'm doing here. This is in one of the bags I put on so that it wouldn't come crashing down if it hurt, if it, uh, Ripen on the vine. I may end up having to cut it off first and then come back and untie it. So you want to make sure that you leave a decent amount of stem on the plant or on the fruit. Oh, see that one I could just snap off. Sometimes you have to cut them, sometimes you snap them. So See, that's the idea of putting that bag on was so that when that harvested, or when it ripened on its own and it snapped off because it would dry up if we left it, that bag would take the weight and it wouldn't fall, which, so you see it would work because I took it off that vine and it's still up there. So I'm going to go ahead and untie this and get that off of there. I need two hands. And there we go. That's off. Anyway, I'm going to get some more of these bugs off of here and then I'm going to show you uh, the trick with a board that I'm going to do. Um, I'm thinking I am going to leave those two vines on that. You know what? I might just say the heck with it and leave. I'm trying to be PC here, guys. <laughs> and leave all three of them in and just come pick the squash bugs that I'm seeing off of them and let the vine borer go for now. Uh, we got four decent sized ones here. So what I'm going to show you with the board is, is a new to me thing. Um, I've usually just have hand picked the squash bugs and the eggs, um, but I've been doing some, some research because we've had so many of them the last two years. Um, that's new to me. So, um, the amount that we've been dealing with is new to me, I should say. So, um, I've been researching and a lot of people swear by this board method and I'm going to give it a try and, um, come out tomorrow morning and we'll let you know what it looks like um i don't know if i'll video it or if i'll just put it on instagram or facebook or both so the method that i'm 
that I've heard about is just taking, like I said, any old board. It's not gunshots really, guys. At least I'm hoping it's not. I'm sure it's building or something. The joys of living in a subdivision. Um, so we take the board and I'm just going to lay it here since I'm having problems with both plants. I am going to trim all these dead guys off real quick. But just lay it down there. Like at, it's a, I, I've heard like at the base of the plants, but since I'm having problems with both plants, maybe I'll just kind of leave it there and see what happens. And then the idea is that apparently at night, the adults and um, I think the juveniles, I'm not 100% positive, will congregate underneath that board. So you come out in the, the next morning and I'm going to bring another piece of board out. And you flip that over and you crush them all between them. Kind of gross. <laughs> but if it works without spraying chemicals, I'm down with it. So <laughs> Anyway, so I will let you know how that works out. I'm going to go ahead and trim these up and then I'll be right back. Okay guys, so here's what I did. I just came in and I clipped all the yucky looking stuff off. For now, just to kind of help maybe see if I can get those other two fruits to um, ripen. As of right now, I've gotten all of the squash bugs and uh, eggs I can see off the acorn squash. I'm sure tonight when we do our walkthrough, we'll be checking again. Um, we usually do that every night. Um, anyway, so. If I let that go a little bit longer and the squash bugs take it out, we'll have a couple off of there too. That's just one plant, guys. Just one plant. That's all. I mean, it's the same thing with the spaghetti squash. I'm going to go down here and show you what I got off the spaghetti squash. Um, off of one plant. One plant. Te okay, technically there were three seeds in there. So I guess maybe technically it's considered three plants because i put three seeds in there but i only have one space in the garden one but this is what I, we got off of it so far you know those are four good size and shelby wants it <laughs> shelby's photo on me those are four good size squash those are enough to feed the family for meals you know um if we just do roasted squash if we if I cube them up and freeze them or can them, um, then you know, I mean, maybe we can get a little bit more out of there um, to add to soups and that in the winter time. But they will store for a decent amount of time also. If you, I mean, don't keep them out in some place hot and sunny, obviously. Um, but they'll store pretty decently, so for long term, long term storage. Spider. <laughs> but anyway, so I just kind of want to bring you along. And with all the failures of the garden, there are successes too. Because technically, I mean, yes, we have squash bugs. But is it a failure? Because we've got at least four decent sized squash off of that one plant space. Uh, I'll put it that way. Um, and I, we've got potentially two more. So is that a failure? Not in my opinion. And I've learned a lot about the climate here um, with, the, with this type of um, vegetable. I've never grown a spaghetti squash here. I've only been here for almost four years. This is my only, only my third year of gardening in Maryland. Still learning. But I wanted to share this with you guys. Brett and I want to share our journey with you guys. Um, if you know more than we do, that's great. I don't care. I mean, I'm not, you know, drop comments below and let me know. Hey, try this or do this or, you know, this is what we do here. By all means, I am always looking for help with that with that kind of stuff. I am not an expert. I I will never profess to be one. Um, but if you're just starting out, look, just take the chance and plant that and learn as you go. We live in an age of technology. Google, I, almost everybody has a smartphone, a laptop, a tablet, some kind of technology. Google stuff if you don't know. Ask. Get on Facebook. You know, go to the groups in Facebook. Find a group in your area. Um, there are a lot of Facebook groups out there. Ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask questions. 
ask questions on the YouTube videos that you, or channels you follow. Somebody, if not, if not the channel owner, somebody that's subscribed to that channel, and and most of the time, more than one somebody's, will give you advice, will help you out. Don't be afraid to ask. I ask all the time, you know, hey, this is new to me. What do you guys do about it? Hey, have you ever seen this? What is this bug? There's a great app that I just got because I found out about it on I can't remember if it's a YouTube channel or a Facebook group. One or the other because I frequent them. Um, it's called, the one I have is, that crazy dog over there, can you see? And then she wonders why the ants fight her. Um, the, the app I have is called Picture Insect. And you just like take a picture of the insect that you have a question about and it'll bring it up and tell you what it is and you know and then you can research a little bit more i've found some crazy new insects since i've been here so anyway long story short we've harvested four spaghetti squash we have two more that i'm hoping will make it to to ripen on the vine before the vine borers or and or the squash beetle take over the you know take that plant down but I'm not going to just let them take it down without a fight, but I'm not going to spray it with anything. Um, I'm going to just do, continue the hand picking and that board trick. And I will update you guys on that board and let you know how it, um, how it turned out. So I, it may not be in video form. Um, it may be on Instagram. So I just I, you can follow us on Instagram. It's uh, Culver's Corner Suburban Homestead. Um, on Facebook, I have a Facebook group, Culver's Corner Suburban Homestead. It's it's C-O-V-E-R. It's like cover, but it's cover. <laughs> I get that all the time. <laughs> so, um, by all means, you know, look us up someplace else too. And, and I'll probably post that on, on there to see how that turns out. Um, that little experiment. But that's a new to me um, tip, so I'm going to try it. But anyway, I hope you guys have a great day. Thanks for stopping by and spending some time with me today. Um, I could have not shown you what the, what's considered a failure, you know, because we have pests taking the plant down. But I wanted to be honest with you guys and, and let you under let you know that it happens to everybody. But look at all the other positive things that are in this garden. I mean, and like I said, we got four big squash. I mean, look at these. Look at these. Uh, there's there's so many successes but if you count losing one plant as a failure and you you know let that discourage you from gardening you're missing out um, because there are so many other successes that you can have and you will have and it will take time if you're just starting new to gardening don't rush it don't try to do everything all at once um, but anyway if you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. Hit the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up if you like the content. Um, I'm We're just starting out our channel. I'm trying to grow our our subscribers, obviously. So if you so are so inclined um, to share this video with your friends or anybody else that may be interested in this topic, we'd really greatly appreciate it. If you're not new to the channel, thanks guys. We really do appreciate you guys coming back and watching our videos and giving us a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel also. We we have a goal this month to hit 100 subscribers. So if you guys pass this video along, share it with friends, share it on your social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, um, we'd really greatly appreciate that. Hope you guys have a great day and I will see you on the next video.